with that tota mojada. They want the agua. They want the Hey guys, welcome to Mojada Mondays with Mila Dawn. We are back with another segment. Today we have Miss Gina. Hi, Hi. Gina. <laughs> so Gina, just tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what you do in the industry. Well, I am from Chicago, but I live here in LA, and that has been quite the transition. I'm here, you know, chasing the artist dream in the industry. I sing and I write. That has been very, it's been the interesting, an interesting road uh, since being here in LA. It's been fun. Um, I'm excited to see where it takes me. Okay. 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 So what? Um, what type of things do you like to write about or sing about? I always end up writing about heartbreak or love. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to uncensor myself and write more about raunchy stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's I'm like tired of, I'm tired of stuff. being sappy. I want to write about raunchy stuff like cheating on people and having sex and all types of non-love and heartbreak related stuff. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, well then we gonna have to talk after this because you know all my vibes about sex. Mojada. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's dope though. So what, um, what got you into doing music? Well, I've been in the church choir since I was seven. And then, um, in high school, I participated in a classical slash gospel choir. And that, those things are my musical influences. But when I got into college, I wanted to kind of like chill and focus on my degree to make sure that I actually graduated so that I can pursue my dream comfortably. Like I would rather be able to sing and use my degree for whatever versus singing and like really struggling to try to make it out here it's hard it's hard and expensive mm -hmm. <laughs> so um how long have you been in la i've been here since july so almost what? almost a year since this year's oh, went by so fast <laughs> oh my god um so in chicago you were doing music as well i was i was doing music in chicago but i never released anything I don't know why, but um, it's been easier to, I don't know how to explain it, it's been easier to, to release music and have photo shoots and do all of the artistic things here than in Chicago. Right. Um, so what have you found is like the most difficult thing of being in LA with producers or rappers or finding people who are serious as a woman? As a woman, the hardest part has been finding people who are serious versus people that just want to have sex or just want to talk to me or date or flirt with me because that'll be their intentions. They'll say, oh, you do music, um, I rap or I produce, uh, you should come over. And then I go over it and we not doing none of that. We not rapping, producing, they want to drink or they want to talk about why I'm in LA. I'm not here for none of that. I'm, I'm, I'm here for my music. If you wanted to date me, that should you should have expressed that as your intentions. You could you should have said you want to date me and somewhere along the line we can work on music, but you shouldn't have led with we should work on music, then try to use that to shoot your shot because now I'm turned off. Now I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't wanna work with you, I don't wanna I don't wanna recommend you. None of that. I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't I don't wanna say I know you. <laughs> Uh, an example would be when I was back living in Chicago, there was this one producer that I was supposed to be working on a joint EP with, uh, because they produced and rap. He was supposed to be working on a joint EP with, but every time we got to the studio, they just wanted to drink or take shots to warm up in the session, and then I have to leave because I got to go to work. So we're never doing anything. We're just sitting there, and then you want to ask me about my life and my dreams and what I want to do, why I'm planning on leaving Chicago. No. No, so now I'm really cautious of who I work with and I have to really trust you. Um, because there, I don't care who you are. There, there, you can have a million followers and want to get into a session with me. But if your intentions are to have sex with me, I'm not, I don't care. I'm not going to that session. I'm yeah. going to turn you down. <laughs> That's good though. Like, have you ever had a problem like going to the studio alone, or do you usually go with somebody? I, if I have, to, if it's somebody new or somebody that I just met, then I'll ask a friend to go with me. Unless it's somebody that I'm really comfortable with or a friend that I'm really comfortable with, or I have one of my roommates go. That's good. Yeah. See, I'm still at a point where even if I, I know them or don't know them, I always go with myself, and that's a problem that I've had since I was 19. I'm still trying to figure that out. I did a 
segment um, on Instagram. It was Lessons with Mila. What I showed how I was in the studio with somebody I knew for like three years before that, and he was in my face just yelling at me because I wouldn't tell him how old I was. Hmm. I think I saw that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I looked at that. <sighs> yeah. So that's basically why I'm asking this question because like. Um, in the industry, it's so hard as a female, like trying to find people that are serious and actually want to work with you because <laughs> at the end of the day, they're just like, oh, shoot, she's a ticket. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're not, we, she's not serious. We just want to fuck. And, you know, that's all cool at the end of the day, but it's like, I actually am serious. A lot of my songs are raunchy. Like, where do we have opposite effects? You're we like, yeah. uh, mine, like, sex. Literally, all my songs are about sex. Um, but I'm trying to tone that down. I'm trying to be like yours. How mine are more of like relationship type, and you're trying to, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to be seen as the the sappy, always in your feelings type of artist. I don't want people to listen to my music when they sad. <laughs> I don't want them to, to listen to my music when they trying to get in the mood too. I don't want like you know Drake songs or something like that. Yeah, um, switch it up a little bit. Actually, it was a bad example. I don't like Trey songs. So. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what? I don't like Trey songs. I don't. He, you know what? I'm not gonna say any more on this. It's in YouTube. <laughs> um, anyway, has there been an encounter um, with you in LA thus far that has been um, bad or, or good? Any, any type of example? I've had some interesting encounters that's that's had me like side eyeing men, especially industry men in LA. Like the way I see them approach women in clubs, or the way I see them treat women in their overly exclusive sections because they have money and they're in the industry. Um, but nothing bad towards me. I just see, I observe. I'm really that's observing. Good. I pay attention to everything that's going on around me. So I see how these men be trying to finesse or whatever. Um, I've had some really good experiences uh, in LA. Like I've met some really cool people. Some people that I have made my friends. Some people that I've made really good connections with. Especially when it comes to working on my music and stuff like that. That's like <clears throat> an example of like a good connection I've made. Then I've made some connections with people where it was like, let's get together to work on this music. Then I meet them and they like, let's get high, let's smoke, let's drink, let's. Oh, we ran out of time. But what you yeah. doing after this? Right. Going home. What do you mean? <laughs> we should have worked while we yeah. was in the studio. You ran out of your session time. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Um, karaoke night. When did that start? When that start started for me in October. Um, I saw one of my friends posted on their story, and I invited one of my roommates for her birthday, and we went. And ever since then, it's just become uh, around that time I was feeling really homesick about my move. And that was something that made me comfortable and want to stay in LA because it was something that, that was really fun that I could look forward to. Because as a singer, when you perform, you always expect us to sing singingly perfect you're a singer so you're not expected to mess up or make mistakes and when you're at karaoke night there 90% of the people can't sing anyway so you're expected to have fun and really entertain if you can sing it's a bonus it's a oh wow she one of them that can really sing but it's something that um they made me really comfortable here so it's something that I like when people ask me what are you doing are you doing with my it's like yeah I'm, yeah, I'm going to karaoke, karaoke night um, we can we can schedule something for Tuesday but karaoke <laughs> I'm, I'm going to karaoke mm-hmm. on Monday because that's what's kept me here so far oh, and that's where I've met most of my friends and stuff like that yeah. I want to tell you that um, you were one of the first people that I asked to get up on stage with me to do uh, I think the first one we did was no scrubs right no we didn't care so, okay so that was in December then so then the, so January was the first one I asked you I was like yo I'm gonna need you to come up on stage and do this cater and cater it's fun together. because you are so different than me like even in my music like I'm the chill I stand in one spot and I just rock side to side and then you got her this is going crazy and I'm like okay I gotta I gotta I gotta step yeah. it up a little bit girl <laughs> There's I'm going to look awkward, but at least we match an energy. And oh. she's going crazy. And I really look like the background to Michelle <laughs> over in the corner. No, we did my love is like, whoa, that's exactly it. You're like standing up. You're like, what the fuck? I'm on the ground in Timo's face. <laughs> yeah. Good times. I'm like, it can't even. 
Because it doesn't even come to my head fast enough what to do. Like, I'm like, what do I do? I get down there with her? Do I stay up here? I need a victim. I need somebody in the audience is just like, Davo is always ready. Yeah. I need somebody in the audience is ready to come and match my energy. Yeah. You know what? I think that's what it was, too. Like, I, um, it's not that I was nervous or, um, or whatever to go up on stage by myself. But it was like trying to just peep the room and be comfortable mm -hmm. with what was going on. Um, and um, I was like, let me, let me, let me try it with somebody first, see what it's like. And then I ended up. So we did no scrubs first. I think Robin was there for that. Mm -hmm. um, I did no scrubs first just to, just to see how it was. And then, um, then the next week, so that was that was the last week of uh, the year. And then the first week of the year, I was like, okay, let me go up there and try to do it in a smaller group, which was catered to you. And then we did my love. I was like, well, I'm like, I think I can go up there and do it by myself, especially because I had Davo. So I was like, let me do this shit. And that's when I did, um, I think that's when I did my, my, my. Yeah. I love it. I love Craig Um, But, oh, there was that one time when the, your, I think it was your roommate or something that got into a fight. I don't know. <laughs> like it was in December. Girl, I was all oh, nose. I was pushed into a, uh, that thing. I said, oh, my God, my back. I fell out. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I know uh, Serranus was there. Like, I girl. was, I first fell. of all, I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say that now. I don't know what happened with that. Till this day, I don't know what happened with that. Um, I just know I was across the stage. See, I was pushed across the stage somewhere, and then I walked away, and that's, that's all I know. I don't, you don't know the actual what happened? No. I don't, it didn't have anything to do with me. Oh, so you never asked? I would have asked. And like, that's just me. Happened? It had nothing to do with me. So I wasn't about to insert myself in that situation in any way, shape, fashion, or form. I wanted nothing to do with that when things like that happen. And there are people, like you said, there are people around watching. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be associated with that. Like, hey, that's your friend. That's your roommate. Yeah. That's this, that. So I don't associate myself at all. I don't want to ask what happened. What happened? I got you. No, no, no. No. I feel you, girl. You know what happened with something? No, I don't. <laughs> I wasn't no, even I around. I wasn't paying attention. No, no. I feel you. Because actually something that just happened to me last week. So we're at the studio. I met him there. He comes to karaoke night. The window's open. The window has never been open. Ever. In the front? No. Yeah. So I'm over there in the little section. Him and his cousin pull up. And I'm like, oh, hey. And they're talking to me through the window, right? He's like, oh, he forgot his ID, so we don't know how to get in. I'm like, oh, I want to know to help you. <laughs> so then Love on Top comes on, right? I'm over here jamming. They jump through the window. <laughs> Security, the, the real tall and Simone guy, I tell you, I will get up ran. and walk away. I will get up and walk away. I don't no, know. No, I pretended like I didn't know. I, I kept dancing. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't even know them. Who was just talking to her? No, y'all wasn't. Yeah, no, the, he, the, he, the guy came and snatched him out the window. I said, oh, don't know him. Never seen him in my life. <laughs> you know what's even crazier? I cannot remember this guy's name, but like, I went on a date at Station 1640 um, on a Monday. Um, long, long, long time ago. Yeah, during karaoke, but it was like maybe like in September or October. I cannot remember. We went on a date over there, me and this guy. Oh, you know what? It had to have been like, like September. Oh my God. Anyway, and then right after that situation, so that guy dubbed me. He like went and got a girlfriend or whatever, like a week later. And we're like, <laughs> I didn't know you were interested. How do you not know you're interested? Anyway, oh, that same situation. So the guy with the window or whatever, the, as soon as they uh, got escorted out, tell me why. That same guy that I went on a date with at Station 64, he started walking past the window like <laughs> five seconds later and was like waving. I'm like, what the? F <laughs> like, this is some like weird. I don't know if it's like deja what vu or like whatever. So he tried to, he was like, hey, and like put his hand out. I'm like, I don't know you. What's up? You trying to dub me? What are you about to dub me? When you fucking just told me that you uh, got a girlfriend and not interested in no more and blah, 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 and then blocked my number. And that was in, that was in October. Yeah, and that men be weird. The dating scene so here, crazy. the dating scene oh here, God. is so weird, and it's like I can't pinpoint it and say that it's dating LA guys is weird because they're all. It's a lot of transplants. It's a lot of LA guys. Mm -hmm. So I can't say. Oh, LA guys are so weird because. No, they are. It's so many different men, and so far they're all weird. Like, they are all just weirdos. I'm, I've been single for like no one's four taking years. dating seriously. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to date seriously, but if I did, none of, none of, I don't have any options right yeah. now. <laughs> I definitely don't. Like, there's no way. In LA, it's hard. Like, I'd have to go to, like, Atlanta or, like, New York or somewhere to find Atlanta a new guy. Like, 
Exactly. No. They, they like playing games. It's true, though. Like, I have a guy right now who told me he's not looking for a girlfriend. And I said, okay, cool. Well, then we don't got to talk no more. But why are you still texting me? Like, what's up? What, what in the morning? What are you doing? That's the same guy. <laughs> oh, shit. I would say his name. <laughs> the same guy. He in my DMs. Where you at? What you doing? Why even wearing my text message? Because you said you're not looking for a girlfriend. So I'm not looking for any type of conversation. Why do men do that? I don't want That's why we wrote a whole song am, about this. But I am going to treat you like I want this. Even though you're not act like me, whole I'm this. not going to make you think I want to be with you. Like, if we say that these are our intentions, I'm going to ask to ask my... If we say we're only having sex, that's all I want. <laughs> Yo, me and Gina, we got a, a song coming out that is literally exactly what we are talking about right now. So... Stay tuned for the song. Um, stay tuned to hear more from Gina and her music. Um, yes. Thank you guys for tuning in to Mahana Mondays with me and Madonna. Thank you for having me. No Thanks.